Hello and welcome to this Minecraft Forge modding tutorial. I'm SciGuy1121 and in this tutorial I will be teaching you how to set up a basic configuration file for your mod. Now I'll be starting off with a basic block with the texture. You can download the source code from my um, custom block texture tutorial. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do uh, to create a configuration file is to replace all of the IDs that we want to be in the configuration file with variables. So what, so the way we're going to do that is actually create variables. So the first one is going to be um, public static int block tutorial ID. Now we're not going to declare the value right there, but we can um, inside of our block tutorial constructor say this dot block tutorial ID and now remember that if you set it to public static and anything um, I believe can change it so you might depending on how your mod is structured want to set it to private static int. I normally like to have a separate class um, completely dedicated to my IDs so I have to have it um, be public but you might want to set it to private if you're going to only have the IDs in a single file. Now we're going to um, actually create a new method for our configuration file and I'm going to call this public void init configuration and it's going to take an FML initialization event that'll be called event and I misspelled it because, yeah, there we go. Um, now we're just going to, inside of our load method at the very top, first thing we're going to do, say this dot init configuration, and then pass in event. Now to actually create our configuration file, we're going to say configuration config. Um, now I've already imported configuration. When you import it, you have to be sure that you import the net.minecraftforge.common rather than the javax.util one um, because, I mean, I hope that's obvious. Um, now we're going to say config equals new configuration. And there used to be a method um, for FML initialization event called event dot and then it was something along the lines of git recommended configuration file that seems to be um, removed in the in the new forge code it may not be um, if I'm wrong correct me in the comments below but there's an easy way to get around it that actually gives us a little bit more control um, over the naming of our file the one issue that there might be is um, if we had two different if the user installed two different mods that had the same name, um, then there would be con conflicts, and I think that the old method would resolve those, but I'm not sure. Anyway, this new uh, way to go about doing things is to say new file, and then we're going to say, we're going to pass in um, the string slash config slash, and then whatever we want our name to be. In this case, it'll be tutorial mod and then we're going to say dot cfg and that um, actually creates our configuration file now we have to say config dot load and at the very bottom we're going to say config dot save now whenever we add a new configuration uh, we're going to put it in, in between these two um, method calls the first one is going to obviously load the file, and the last one uh, closes the file and then saves it. Now, um, to actually set up our ID, we're going to say block tutorial ID equals config.get. And then there are three parameters. The first one is going to be the category name. In this case, it'll just be blocks. The second one is going to be the name of the um, variable. In this case, it'll be block tutorial. And then the third one is going to be the default value. Um, now, it could be a Boolean, it could be an integer, it could be a float. 
Um, since we're doing an ID, it's going to be an integer right now, and I'm going to set it to 800. And then we're going to say dot get int. Now, if you had an I, um, if you were doing a configuration with a boolean, you would say dot get boolean. Um, we can't do it now because it's a different method. But there would be see um, dot get boolean, and then if we were doing a double dot get double, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now if we go ahead and run the game, um, we actually have to load a world to uh, set up the configuration properly. There seems to be an issue here. Invalid session ID. Okay, that's not our problem. No such file or directory. Okay. Um, there might be a slight issue, but if we heat load the world and then we save and quit, quit game, then if we go to config, yeah, so there's a slight problem, um, but we have a solution. If we remove this config right here, then it will create our configuration file. Yes, it does. So what we might have to do is say config slash tutorial mod. Um, sorry about this. I normally don't I normally try not to have any bugs, um, but there seems to have been a slight issue. And then if we look inside of config, yeah, so it's in there. So when you're um, when you have your new file name, be sure not to put a forward slash in front of config. Um, that seems to have messed up the configuration file for some reason. But now if we go and we can look for it inside of jars config, then if we open up tutorialmod.config, I'm going to open up with Text Wrangler, um, which is a very useful free program uh, you can get on the Mac App Store. Then you'll see we have our category, and then inside of the category we have um, each entry, and it has a default value. If we were to change this to 850, say, and then run, run the game, then it will. See, it'll say um, ID 800 is missing, but we can continue loading. It will not have the old um, blocks there, however. Oh, and I don't have it inside of the creative tab. However, the blocks are still part of the game. They just have a different ID. Um, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. Remember not to put a forward slash in front of config. Um, and source code will be in the description as usual. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you next time. Bye.